Easter morning, Kingsley community. This is Pastor Colleen Weirman coming to you live on Easter day, a joyful day, a day to praise Jesus Christ because he is alive. So in this worship service today, whenever you hear me say the traditional church, traditional words, Christ is risen, I want you to say from your house, he is risen indeed. So let's practice. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Good job. You guys are doing good. So we're going to start this morning with some prayers. I got a children's message for you. I've got a short sermon, short sermon, only about 10, 15 minutes, because I want you to go and celebrate Easter with your families and have a wonderful time. And then check out right after this, I'm going to put up a link to a song, Glorious Day. The Lit family and Kelsey are going to be singing that. So make sure after I'm done here that you click on the link to our YouTube page, uh, YouTube channel, where they're singing Glorious Day. So, Because it is a glorious day. So let's open with prayer, shall we? Let us pray. Praise the Lord who has shown us the wonders of his unfailing love and who, for the sake of his name, leads us and guides us. In you, O oh Lord, we put our trust. You are our God, and our lives are in your hands. Lord, let the light of your face shine on us as we celebrate together your glorious presence with us. In the name of Christ, amen. Because Jesus is here. If Jesus is alive, then he's here worshiping with us, no matter whether it's on Facebook Live or in person. Where two or more are gathered, Jesus is in our midst. So it is a glorious day. So I'm going to do a children's message right now. So kids, listen up. I want to talk a little bit about a couple of thoughts that I used to have, and I still do sometimes, when I was a kid. And one of the questions I had was, why did Jesus allow the people to crucify him? I mean, he was doing miracles, and he was raising people from the dead, and he was curing disease and feeding 5,000 with just a few loaves of bread and a few fish. I mean, why would he let someone commit him to crucifixion? Why would he allow that? I mean, he claimed himself that he's the son of man, the bread of life, holy living water, the Messiah. At one point, he even said, I am, which is the Old Testament name for Yahweh. And he lived a sinless life, just like this water right here. You see this water that I have? It's clear, it's pure, it reminds us of Jesus. He lived a sinless life, which means he never sinned. So why would the king of the universe choose to die? Well, it has everything to do with you, and it has everything to do with me. You see, let's say this cloth here represents you and me. We do not come born sinless. We are born into sin which represents this nasty stuff I have right here. So we are born into sin. I mean, have you ever had to teach a baby how to cry? Have you ever had to teach a toddler how to hoard all their, all their toys and not share? Have you ever had to teach a toddler um, to throw a temper tantrum? Absolutely not. We are born with sin in us. It's a human condition. It happened a long, long time ago in the garden. So every time we lie, every time we might gossip about something or someone, every time we might cheat on a test, sin covers our heart. And you know the bad thing, the even worse thing about sin is that we can't do anything to get rid of it. We can't do anything on our own to get rid of it. But when Jesus went to the cross, he took all of our sin upon himself. Give it a minute. <laughs> he took all of his, all of our sin upon himself. So that when he went to the cross, we were made clean. Isn't that amazing? He took all of our sin upon himself. Isn't that cool? And the really cool thing about it is that this was not just a one-time thing. Whenever we sin, Jesus forgives us because of what he did on the cross and because of his resurrection. 
So if we sin, we can give, ask God for forgiveness. We can ask him to forgive us because he already has. He took all that nasty sin for us on the cross. And we come out white and pure and holy, just like God, because of what Jesus did on the cross. So isn't that cool? So remember that today. That's what the Easter story is all about, about how Jesus took our sin on the cross. Not just our sin that we did yesterday or the sin that we're going to do today, but even the sins that we'll do tomorrow. Jesus took them all on himself on the cross. And then he took them to the grave and he got rid of them forever. And so God doesn't remember our sins when we ask for forgiveness from Jesus Christ. He doesn't remember them. The scripture says he doesn't remember them for as far as the east is from the west. So that is good news today. So kids, share that story with someone because the Easter story is to be shared not just on Easter, but every single day. Let me pray for you kids right now. Lord, we thank you for each child watching. We, we just ask that in their own way and in their own understanding, they can realize that um, God, Jesus, God in Christ has taken their sins away. And yeah, we still sin. We try not to because we respect Jesus and we obey Jesus, but sometimes we do. But no longer does that sin make us feel bad because we can ask you, Jesus, for forgiveness. And that's what Easter is all about. So we thank you for each kid. We ask a blessing on them. Keep them safe. Keep them happy and healthy. In the name of Christ, amen. Okay, so that was kind of a fun um, a fun thing. I'm just going to slide this over a little bit so I can give myself a little bit of room. Because you know I like to walk around when I preach. So this morning's scripture is going to come from the Gospel of John. And it is um, chapter 11, verses 17 through 27. And it's the New Revised Standard Version. And get this, this is the title. Jesus, the Resurrection, and the Life. What a perfect scripture to use for Easter, although you don't usually hear this scripture on Easter, but I think it's perfect. So here are the words of God from the Gospel of John, chapter 11. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. And Mar Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. And listen to what Jesus says. I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, yet they die, they shall live. Even though they die, they shall live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. And he asked her, do you believe this, Martha? And she said to him, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. This is the word of God for you, the people of God. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> so have you ever given some thought as to what you say you believe? Let me give you an example. If I say I believe in freedom of expression, then I must also believe that when someone expresses themselves in a way that I don't agree with, they have the freedom to do so. Would you agree with that? Let me give you another example. If I believe in honesty, then I can't really believe in lying, can I? Or how about this one? If I believe that all lives are of sacred worth, then I have to also believe and have a very difficult time with capital punishment. Would you agree with that? So let me ask you one more question. If you believe and I believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, then we also have to believe that Satan has been defeated. Get it? If we say Christ is risen, he's risen indeed, then we have to say death is not the end. If we say, yes, Jesus is alive, then we must say no to the power of sin in our lives. To say Jesus is risen is to also say that Satan, the biggest and the baddest, I know it's supposed to be worst, the biggest and the baddest bad boy of Easter has been defeated. That's what we have to believe if we believe in the resurrection. 
So I'm going to talk about that this morning. If we believe in the resurrection, then we also have to believe in three other things. There's many other things that we have to believe in, but I'm just going to keep it to three. So the very first thing that we must believe if we believe in the resurrection of Jesus is that Satan is, has been vanquished. He is a defeated enemy. Satan is defined in the Old Testament as the originator of evil. Listen to how he's described in Genesis 3, verse 1. Now the serpent, talking about Satan, was more crafty than the other wild animals that the Lord had made. And then we know that Satan planted his seed of evil in humanity by tricking Adam and Eve, right? But God, way back in the Garden of Eden, already gave Satan his execution warning. Listen to what God says to Satan. He says, so the Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, you have tricked Adam and Eve. You are cursed above all livestock and all wild animals. You will crawl on your belly and you will eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head, and you will strike his heel. Okay, now listen to this for a minute. If somebody came up and hit my heel, even with a sledgehammer, okay, I'm going to have some broken bones. It's going to hurt really bad, but I'm still going to be alive, right? But if someone crushes my head, I'm going to be dead, right? So it says, the woman's offspring will crush your head, Satan. Who is the woman's offspring? Jesus Christ is the woman's offspring. So if we believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we have to believe that Jesus has already crushed Satan. Satan is a wounded enemy. Even though sin and evil still exist on earth, Satan has already been shackled and chained of his powers over human beings because of the resurrection of Jesus. Did you know that Satan has never had dominion over us? Believers or even unbelievers? And you say, no, they have dominion over, he has dominion over unbelievers. Uh-uh, listen. In the garden, Satan only tempted Adam and Eve. It was their choice to give in to the temptation. If we believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, then we have to believe that we have never been under the authority of Satan. Do you know why? Because God never gave human beings sovereignty. God never said, you have authority over yourself. You know what God did say to human beings? He said, you have authority over the animals. Adam, go ahead and name them all. You have authority over the ground, over the land, over my creation. That is what you have authority under. So Satan could never take our authority because we never had it in the first place. So Satan could not make us under his authority because he never could get our authority. Our authority has always come from God. God is the one that is our authority. He is the one. He says, I am the creator. You are the creation. You have never had authority over yourselves. Although some of us live that way, don't we? We live that way thinking it's all about me and my life is all about me and I have authority over myself. No, you don't. God says, I'm the creator. You're the creation. I have always had authority over you. Therefore, Satan can never have authority over us. And what's the point of that? That means Satan can only tempt us. He cannot make us do things. He can only tempt us. Because of Jesus' crucifixion and resurrection, Satan has been defeated. You know in Revelations where it says Jesus will come back and then he will shackle Satan in chains and he'll throw him into the lake of fire. Satan has already been shackled of his power. He can only tempt us. He can never make us do things. That's the only power that Satan has, is to tempt us. Now, it's our choice whether we choose to give in to that temptation or not. But if we say we believe in the resurrection of Jesus, then we must also say that Satan is a defeated enemy. He is defeated. Secondly, if we say we believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, then we also have to believe that Jesus has victory over sin. He has defeated sin. While we still sin, there is no power over those who believe in Jesus Christ over sin. The Holy Spirit helps us to choose a different path when Satan does tempt us, because he likes to tempt Christians just as much as he likes to tempt unbelievers. He tempts us all the time. He's tricky and he's crafty. That's what was said about him in Genesis. 
He's tricky and he's crafty. But because of Jesus Christ and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, those who believe in Jesus, because of the power of Jesus and his resurrection, we can, like James says in his letter, resist the devil and he will flee. So when the devil tempts you with whatever temptation he has, overeating, drinking too much, um, swearing too much, or um, whatever it is that you struggle with, know that that is just a temptation. Jesus Christ has already defeated that sin. He's already defeated Satan. So that's all he can do is tempt you. But if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, then you have the power of the Holy Spirit in you to resist the devil. And this is what you do. You pray to God to show you a way out of that temptation. And he will always give you an exit ramp. He will always show you a way out. If you'll just pray and give him a minute, he will show you a way out. You'll either get a phone call that will stop you from doing what you wanted, what you were tempted to do, or he'll put you in a different situation or something will happen. So you got to wait for that. And then you say to that, to the devil, in the name of Jesus Christ, flee from me. Because he has to, at the name of Jesus Christ, flee from you. Because Satan is a defeated enemy. He's a defeated enemy. So if we believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, then we have to believe that he has already defeated sin. And lastly, if we believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, then we have to believe that Jesus has defeated death. Experience tells us that death wins and that even the strong succumb to it. Experience tells us that, hey, you know, life is short. I'm going to go ahead and live for myself. It's all about me because once I'm dead, I'm dead. And yes, death still happens to all of us. But if we believe in the resurrection, we must believe that death is not the ending. Jesus said to Martha in John eleven twenty five, 25, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though they die, yet shall they live. And if we believe this, if we believe this, then we must also believe what the Apostle Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians, that death has been swallowed up by victory. Death is not the end. If we claim that Jesus is risen, he's risen indeed, then we must believe that death does not get the last word. Jesus gets the last word. And Jesus' last word at his resurrection is not death, it is life. Jesus gives us new life at the resurrection. So I'll ask you, like Jesus asked Martha, do you believe this? I pray that you do. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for reminding us that Satan has been defeated. It's not like Satan and God are in this big spiritual warfare and they each have evil, even power and we're just waiting to see who wins. No, Jesus has already defeated Satan. He's shackled him. He's allowed some kind of free reign, but he can only tempt us. And sin can never have the power over us that it did before we knew Jesus Christ. And finally, death is not the end. Death has been swallowed up in the victory of Jesus' resurrection. So we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for going to the cross for us. And we thank you, Lord, for being our God. Amen. So now is the time that we would normally do the offering. So let me grab an offering plate here. So remember, you can put your offering. We found a cool way that you can put an offering in this church. In our front doors, when you're looking at the church and you see the two sets of doors, the doors to the north, you can just slide an envelope right between the two of them. So we've got ourselves a personal mail slot. So you can do that, or you can um, mail it to P.O. Box 395, Kingsley, Michigan, 49649. Or you can go on to kingsleymethodistchurch.com and you can put it on by PayPal. Either way, we thank you so much for giving. So let's pray for our offering now. God of grace, we hear your call to generous giving in the way you meet our needs every day. And in the peace you give us, which passes all understanding. Having received so much, we offer all we have our time, talents, and money for your kingdom. We ask that you bless these gifts so we can continue the work of your church. In Jesus' name, amen. So again, remember that 
Right here after this live broadcast, the Lit family and Kelsey are going to sing Glorious Day, so make sure you click on that YouTube video and watch them. She's done a great job. Thank you, Kelsey, for singing. And then next week, I'm going to start a new word, um, sermon series called Anxious for Nothing. It's based on Max Lucado's book, Anxious for Nothing. And I'm going to also do a Bible study um, through a Zoom meeting. So if you're interested in following along with Max Lucado's Anxious for Nothing Bible study, then go ahead and PM me um, that you're interested, and I will send you the Zoom link. We're going to start that next Tuesday, probably at 7 o'clock. So have a wonderful Easter. I want you, too, to post some pictures of what you and your family did for Easter. Maybe it's sitting there having ham and cheesy potatoes and, and all the fixings for Easter, or maybe it's just hot dogs and chips. Whatever it is you have in your home, or maybe you guys are going to go for a walk. Just send that picture and post it on our Kingsley United Methodist Church Facebook page. Let me close in prayer. May the Lord bless you and keep you healthy this day and each day of your life. May the Lord Jesus Christ make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his face upon you and give you peace. Amen. Have a happy Easter. Bye-bye.